say the main advice is that you I wish I had um, is that you're not going to be good at everything. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be really tricky and that you're just going to be bad at. Um, and that's OK because <laughs> you're learning. <laughs> um, and that no one's going to get mad at you if you're not doing everything perfectly. Like if you've got no clue what you're doing, it's OK. It doesn't like doesn't really matter. Um, it's better that you're honest about it up front and then, you know, deal with it kind of thing. Um, but I'd say that's, you know, that's a bit of advice that I got when I was maybe like a little while into, you know, being uh, into my career. Um, and that really sort of turned things around for me where I was like, okay, I don't have to be good at everything. It's okay to not be, I can just, you know, go along with things and, you know, try and do my best, but it's okay if I'm not good at it, <laughs> um, which I think was really useful for me. Um, I'd say in terms of pre-university, um, I think try and keep the net pretty wide at uni is in like you know do lots of things that you're interested in like if you're doing first year then like do some optional subjects that are in things that you know totally out there like in my first year I did biology which I guess is not that out there but you know it was fun um and I did like a a course in uh reasoning and knowledge which was like a philosophy module um so you know try out lots of different stuff see what sticks see what's interesting um and uh yeah just like try and get involved um especially even things like the like there's a lot of social stuff that goes on within um university um you know like societies and things it's good to get involved in um and that kind of i guess goes into university students as well if i'm giving advice to people who are currently at uni um uh, specifically, if you want to go into, I mean, the career that I'm in, which is in physics education research, um, there's so many good opportunities for like teaching and volunteering. Um, the St Andrews public engagement team, as in like uh, headed by Barry Stewart at the moment, like she's been another really, really useful contact for me, um, who I think I've used her as my um, one of my references for almost every, I think every application I've put in, <laughs> um, her and uh, Rita, my supervisor. So uh, contacts like that are also very useful to have for references, which is good to know. Um, so having people who, you know, know you very well and will be able to write a good reference for you um, is really great. So that's one of the things that, you know, might be worth thinking about while you're at uni is thinking like, okay, which of these people are they in the right sort of field for me? If they get to like, if I work with them, you know, outside of uni or work with them, like help them with other things, they're going to be able to write a better reference for me because they'll know me better and they can give more, you know, flavour to it. <laughs> um, so I'd say that's a, a good tip is just, you know, to reach out if that's your motivation for it. It's not a bad motivation. Um, and I mean, a lot of it falls into the same advice I was given before where like just do stuff. And like if you're at university as well, um, I think specifically at St Andrews, there's so many good societies to get involved in, um, which can be really helpful for contacts, both, you know, like peers and, um, you know, outside of it and things. And th even things like, you know, go to the guest lectures and, you know, if there's one, if there's one that you find interesting, if not, like, you know, don't worry about it. But like, if there's, if there's ones that are like interesting topics, you never know what's going to spark your interest or, you know, it could be the person giving the guest lecture, you're like, wow, I want to do what they're doing. And then you can go and talk to them. <laughs> um, yeah, which I think is, I think is really important. Um, and then in terms of if you've just graduated, um, advice I would give you at that point, I think would be, it's quite scary, but don't worry. <laughs> um, you know, like I was lucky in that, um, you know, my supervisor offered me a job uh, or like found a suitable position for me like fairly soon after my um after I graduated but for a lot of people I know it took them you know up to a year or so before they found any positions um but don't lose faith um it takes a lot of applications to get anywhere so just send out like loads of applications it's boring and difficult but you know it's a if it's a numbers game then the more the better you know you're not gonna and try and not take if you're getting 
like rejected or not hearing back from applications and things, try and not take it too personally. Um, particularly at the moment, like there's so many people applying for every position that statistically, you know, there's going to be a lot of people going for it. So you're not likely to get, you know, all the ones you apply for. Um, so yeah, it's if you just graduated, it's not the easiest thing, but try and keep keep your spirits up as much as you can, um, and uh, and yeah, just just keep at it. Um, and once you know, use those contacts you got. Ask people if they know of things, um, and uh, yeah, that I'd say would be the the main advice. Just just keep at it. I would say as like a, a woman working in science, I mean, it's a little bit different because for me in the education department, there is probably more of a skew towards women in education, but obviously in physics, there's much more of a skew towards men being in physics. Um, and I think the sort of main tips that I would keep in mind is first of all, that it's okay to talk about it. So it's really nice. Some of the colleagues have had here, it's an ongoing discussion of like, you know, they've been talking about, um, different ways to increase diversity and things in uh, in the company and in like in like just in general in the field of you know science and physics and space science um, so I think one of the things that is good is just talking about it and especially like if you're feeling like for example you're a minority in a group and you're feeling totally like overwhelmed by it like so for example I will there's a few other like women in my department who I can talk to about it um, and we can just discuss, I don't know, whether we're discussing the actual topic itself or even just meeting. So there's, for example, this like um, uh, women in the science division, like lunch that happens every now and again, um, where it's just, you know, getting together. Um, we don't talk about, you know, the disparity, <laughs> gender disparity and physics or anything, but just like chatting and uh, like having that sort of like support network there that you know is there, I think is really nice. Um, but yeah, I think what's good about the sort of at the moment there seems to be a, bit of a, a push to make people more aware that this is going on. Um, this like sort of gender disparity and more awareness of like trying to address, um, you know, improving it. And I think one of the big things is trying to improve it, not by forcing, you know, like artificially putting more women into these situations is trying to figure out okay why is it that women aren't in uh, science why are they leaving science because it's been shown that uh, it tends to be as the level progresses there are less and less women so like you know at masters there are less less percentage of women and then at PhD there's less percentage of women um, and it's figuring out the reasons why that is so whether that is um, you know, social or to do with, you know, maternity leave or, you know, like relationship dynamics, things like this. Um, this I guess this isn't so much an actionable response, but it's just good to, you know, think about, for example, if you're applying for companies and things, being aware of what are they doing to address that disparity instead of just artificially, you know, uh, like getting more women into the topic. It's like, okay, what's making that difference in there, whether that's just a subconscious bias or, or what it is. Um, but I would say, yeah, be, be, try, to, try to be aware of um, what are the factors in play there really and find, uh, try and find people who are in your sort of community that you can, you can talk to and have as a support network. My main tip for interviews is gonna sound really cheesy and trite, but, you know, be yourself is the best advice, which I know sounds annoying, but basically what I mean by that is don't lie about your, you know, uh, skills and things. It's all very well, you know, selling them in a good light, but if there's something that you don't think you're going to be able to do, it's much better, like, they're going to appreciate it more if you just tell them, oh, actually, I don't know how to do that, but I'd be really interested in learning. So, for example, when I applied for my um, PhD during one of the interviews, they, so in my CV, I've got written that I have um, the basics in Dutch, um, which I do, I speak like a little bit of Dutch, but it's like very basic. Um, and in the interview, they were like, oh, some of the interviews we'd want to do in Dutch because it's in um, Antwerp, the, the university, and I would want to do some of the, the teacher interviews and things in Dutch. Will that be a problem for you? And 
there's sort of there was the temptation to be like oh no that's fine but instead I just like mm, yes I think that would be a, a concern but I'm willing to you know take more Dutch lessons I'm willing to get past it but I wouldn't want to compromise the uh you know the, the scientific results from the interviews due to my lack of, of Dutch knowledge so I basically just told them you know straight up like I don't have that skill necessarily but I'd be excited to learn about it um and I think you're going to get a lot further like in general I think interviewers are going to be able to tell if you're kind of you know like um being insincere about things so I think you want to get across you know you sure sell yourself your skills like this is a chance for you to really you know pick yourself up and be like I can do all these things and I'm very good at these things um and you have to a little bit I mean, for me, at least, like growing up in Scotland, I've got a bit of the sort of British modesty of like, you know, oh, I'm OK at this kind of thing. But you have to sort of get through that a bit and be like, yeah, I'm very experienced in this or I'm proficient in this kind of thing. Um, uh, but I think also just showing your enthusiasm, like show that you're excited about the topic. Um, and I think if you're genuinely, you know, excited about the topic and that shows that goes a long way. Um, and just having that sort of like rapport with the interviewers and stuff just by being excited and uh, interested. Um, in terms of preparation, uh, there's a few things I would suggest. One of them is look into if it's like a company you're applying for, research what they do, what their history is, what their sort of, you know, what their current company situation is like. Just it goes a long way to be able to show that you've done a bit of background research on them that you know about you know, projects that are going on with them or um, things that they've worked on in the past or this kind of thing, or even just like the city that they're in to show that you know a little bit about it. Um, that goes a long way just to show that you've done the groundwork and that you're serious about it. Um, and the other thing I would say is have a few questions ready for the end of it. So some good sort of go-to questions um, would be things like, what would my day-to-day -day look like? Obviously, some of this may be covered in the interview already, but some good sort of go-to questions would be, yeah, who will I be working with on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, what will my day-to-day -day work um, likely look like there? Um, if you're feeling, you know, I, I don't know if I ask this one very often, but you can ask like how many other applicants are you interviewing, which is just quite a good one to know. Um, but I always chicken out of asking that because it feels a bit cheeky, but I don't think it is. I think it's totally fine to ask it. Um, and what are some other good, questions yeah and also any other just genuine questions you have about it it's good to have a couple prepared beforehand um if you don't get through them all that's fine but they'll they'll usually in interviews they'll ask you at the end okay do you have any questions for us and it's nice to have a few up your sleeve um just to be ready with um i would also say one of the tips i do before i go to an interview is i'll go through with my cv and the job application pick out all of the skills they're asking for in the job application or all the experience they're asking for and match it up with what you've done or like experiences that you've had and stuff and I even just I have a notebook with with me in the interviews that's got you know like this skill this is what I've done so that when they ask you oh so what's your experience in this you can say concretely you know it's really good to give examples of you know if they say what are your teamwork skills like? It's really good to say, you know, oh, well, back in uh, 2019, I worked in this group and it happened like this. And this is, you know, how it went and how I found it. And so, yeah, I think have a couple of concrete examples for the proof, your points, so back up your points that you're making. So if, you know, in your application, you said that you were an independent worker and a team leader, you want to be able to back up those points with evidence of when you've done that in the past. Um, there's also a chance they may ask you things like, oh, when was the time that you had to overcome a difficult thing or you had to, um, you know, work in a, in a challenging environment or something. So they might not ask these. It's not like, you know, guaranteed, but it's always worth have a little think about some of the, you know, experience that you've had uh in your you know university or even just like your home life and stuff like where you've you've you know overcome something or whether you've shown one of these um you know skills so the, the examples you give they don't necessarily have to be uh academic or in a job or whatever they can just be in your everyday life but it's really good to have just um you know a couple of, of good concrete examples in your back pocket um, i don't think i off the top of my head i can't think of being asked on the spot to ask to like solve problems particularly. 
Um, but when I've been asked questions that I'm not sure how to answer them, um, my main tips there would be, first off, just like take a minute, think about it, and you can always ask, could you please repeat the question? Or one that I quite like to do is I'm saying, sorry, to clarify what you're asking is, and then you reword it how you understood it, and then they can let you know if you're answering the right question, because quite often when you're in an interview, you're like, you know, confused, like, you know, you got your whole mind is running and you end up answering the wrong question. So it's always worth take a beat if there's a problem, whatever. And it also just gives you more time to think. Just say either could you reword re the question or could you reiterate the question or give them your understanding of it and see if that's correct. Um, and I would say if you're asked to solve a problem, ask for a minute, say, oh, let me think about that for a little bit. Even if, I mean, whatever the question is, even if it's just a question about, you know, any question, you can always ask, let me just think about that for a moment. And they're not gonna, you know, that's gonna have no negative repercussions. That's only gonna give you more time to be more focused and, you know, give a better answer. Um, I would also say, don't be afraid to just say you don't know. If they give you a problem and you can't solve it, you're, a hundred times better just saying I don't know like think about it obviously and try and give them you know your best shot but say I don't know but my guess would be or this is the the problem solving route that I would take to get here or this is the you know give them what you can but they're gonna appreciate it more if you're honest with them about your you know like where you're at um than if you you know try and fleece them with some answer that you you know just pulled out of the air um my other um yeah I think it's it's just fine to say that you, you don't know there was one other point that I was going to make and it's totally gone from my mind but 